Hello everybody, I am Arichto and today I will do some speed coding. Problem name is maximal square. I think it's about maximal square of ones in the grid. Today, let's say I want to have some fun and I will try to do it as quick as I can and then explain it. Why would we use that algorithm? And I want to have some example test. Start. Find the biggest square with ones. height and width of the grid uh, if h is 0 or matrix of 0 is empty return 0 I don't know if it's allowed or not and now dp why do we do dp I will explain later and not that size h by w by default filled with zeros Iterate over rows, columns. I will say dp is best square ending there. If it is a one, matrix of row call is one, then dp of row call is at least one. Uh, but actually, if both row is greater than zero and call is greater than zero, Minimum of those two numbers, and this is the hardest part of the code. Plus, anyway, answer is maximum of itself and dp of row column. Return answer. Minute 30, assuming that. Uh, Assuming that it's correct, it isn't. Output to expected for. Return its area. I tried to be fast. I didn't even read the program carefully. Well, and there is some mistake. I print that it's three by three uh, because I'm missing something. Yeah. I misclicked, should be two minutes. Now, what happened? First of all, this is, as you can see, dynamic programming, and by dp of, I will hide the timer, for me, dp of rc is, you might want to say best, best answer, best square, up to position rc. Looking from top left corner, zero, zero, up to this, what is the best square? Actually, to be able to continue our dp, it will be best square ending at rc. Possibly will be continued in the future. And this is why it makes any sense to do this. Let's see drawings. This is example from the statement with answer being <coughs> area equal to 4, this square. How do we even get the idea that it should be dynamic programming? Dynamic programming makes sense if we can do the answer, best square, biggest square with ones for the full rectangle, for the full input, by asking a sub problem what's the biggest square in some smaller rectangle, maybe this one, for example. If somebody told us here the biggest square is 2 by 2 or maybe 3 by 3, can we say what is the answer here? Well, what if that optimal square lies somewhere like that? We can make another query, uh, what's the biggest square in this thing? But still, we might miss the answer, because the answer might hit our bottom right corner. Not in the case where this is zero, but maybe theoretically this would be the answer that we need to find. So by asking the P about this blue rectangle and red rectangle, we will not necessarily find the answer, but we will not find the answer only if uh, the square ends exactly there. So that's the idea. We need to find the biggest square ending here. Maybe it's this one, this one, this one. Among those, I want to ask how big square ends there. And there are methods for that, like prefix sums. There is something like two-dimensional prefix sums. I will maybe cover that in some other video. But what about using dp? 
it would make sense, you might think, to say, of, of course, this all assumes that this is not zero, it's instead one. Because if it's zero, we know there is no square, like, like no yellow square that I drew a moment ago is good, consists of just ones. Instead, if this was one, then I would need to say kind of how far I can expand to still have ones. Here, it's bad. You might say, hey, it's a bit similar to finding the best, biggest square ending here. Uh, like here it would be two by two. So maybe this thing will be three by three. Because if I see that this three by three is not good, doesn't consist of ones, then for sure this four by four will not be good either. And this gives us idea that dp should be biggest square ending somewhere. dp of row column, for example, for this cell, will be among, let's say, blue squares I draw now, what is the biggest square with just ones? And here it would be this two by two thing. Uh, in my implementation, I remembered side of such square. So dp of this cell will be two. And then dp of this cell should become three, assuming that also those are ones and those are ones. And to ensure that, I actually took minimum of three numbers in my code. We will get back to the code in a moment. Minimum of three numbers, minimum of dp in those three cells. What does it mean? Well, if, let's say now we use yellow as previous dps, if I know that this square two by two is all ones, this two by two is all ones, and this two by two is all ones, so ending here, ending here, and ending there, if all of them are filled with ones, and also this is one, then I have this big square three by three with ones. It isn't the case here. dp for this cell will just be one. It means that here I just have this square. Biggest square ending here is this. Biggest square ending here is that. Minimum of those three values, sides of those squares is side of one over here. So the biggest I can get here is two. And that's the logic and some intuition how the hell we would just get that idea. Also, you could just say, well, we have a grid, and often in problems we in a grid like going from top left corner to bottom right corner, dp of ij is the best score up to here, ending here. Like If we wanted to maximize the total number of coins we get by doing a, this path, going bottom, uh, going down or right every time, we would define dp of ij as the best path ending here, so maybe the best square ending here. That's some intuition. Uh, last thing to do is to actually analyze what happens for this test. And now this is a zero. Uh, so what is the P of this cell? It is one. It is the biggest square ending here. What is the, big, the DP for this cell? Zero, because even this cell is not good. Uh, for this one, it's one, zero, zero one and now here this could be two it would be two only if all those three numbers were one because it would mean those three squares are good so i am good as well but this is not the case this is just zero here again it would be two i take minimum of those three numbers in my code if all of them were one it would mean i can be two suddenly it is just a minimum of those three is zero plus one myself it is one here it's one, minimum of three, but includes that sadly. Again, one, one, uh, one, but if this was one instead, then this would be a two. It isn't the case, but you know, uh, it could be. So we still are with blue numbers. Red is just something hypothetical, something possible maybe in some other test. Uh, this is one and here something new happens minimum of those three is one it means that each of those squares they are good and i am good as well two uh, then this is two as well minimum of those three notice if those three were all two it would mean that this is good this is good and this is good then i would be free it's not the case i'm just saying what would happen in another test 
uh, last row one minimum of this this and that but those are zeros actually in my code i say only if row and column are greater than zero so you are not first row or first column then you might be bigger than this you might use those three values uh, this is zero because it's zero this is minimum of those three numbers plus one so zero plus one and this is zero that's the end of this simulation i hope this helped a little bit in understanding what the code does let's look at again what happened here i created an array aged by w height by width by default vectors are filled with zeros so it's just you know like array dp of h w equivalent to this answer is initially zero every time when i see oh ending here the best square is three i consider answer to be that at the end i will return its square because they asked me about area if i'm not one if digit here is not one then the default value of dp equal to zero after i create the array uh, stays there otherwise initially i put that as one because i know at least i have square one and if this is not first row or column then um, add minimum of three numbers the, the thing on the left on the above me and left above me those three because i know as i said if those three uh, the squares there end with size at least two then i am square with size at least three i hope you enjoyed that and the problem was is now a bit easier to understand including the very important thing remember about that when you train ask yourself do i understand why i would approach it like that next time when you don't solve a problem ask yourself that question so that next time you see this problem or something similar, you will know, oh, dynamic programming makes sense here. And for two-dimensional prefix sums, I will make some video in the future, I guess. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.